Hey guys, so let me start this video by just telling you what Matt told me when he just called me. Um, it was the first time I talked to him today. And he said, did you leave me a, um, a note today that said, we ain't got no water? And I said, yes, cause I did. And he said, do you realize that you left that note on the notepad sitting right next to a 24 pack of water? And no, no, I did not, obviously. This morning when I went to get a bottle of water when I was on my way to the gym, I noticed that there was only one bottle of water in the refrigerator. And I remembered Matt telling me that he had brought home a 24 pack of water from work uh, last Thursday. And I was like, okay. And he told me he was leaving it in the car because it was cold outside and he wanted it to get cold or something. I don't remember what the deal was, but I was thinking this morning, okay, he still hasn't taken that water out of his car. It's still sitting in his car. So I left that message. I left that notepad for him. And uh, my belief that he, it was still sitting in his car was so strong that I did not notice a 24 pack of water sitting right next to the notepad. So that's just a another prime demonstration about how what you're thinking about something can absolutely blind you to it being right there in front of you. I might have even looked right at it and just not even processed what it was. So there's just another, that's like a real life example, um, an everyday example. And how many times do you not know that that happened? If I hadn't said anything, if I hadn't left a note, which I didn't, you know, I could have just gotten some water myself. I never would have even known that that happened, probably. How many times a day is that happening to you? How many of the necessary and obvious first steps or next steps, next steps towards whatever you want to make happen in your life are right there, right in front of you, and you simply don't see that they're there because of something that you're thinking about what has to happen in order for you to do this thing or get this thing or what what has to happen before you can start to get it or um, you know something like that or anything about yourself that you're thinking that is making you think that you're not um, ready or able uh, or the right kind of person to have this thing do this thing be this thing whatever that's it, it's happening all the time if you intend to become aware of this you will see that it's happening all the time and then hopefully you can um, remove these blocks to seeing these things by you know consciously and purposely removing these blinding ideas that you have anyway you me and everyone may we all uh, do this as much as possible from here on out so I wanted to start this with that because that just happened um, but so some weird shit's going on in my life and I just wanted to talk about it and shout out to Emperor James at Emperor James I'm gonna link to his YouTube channel below because he wrote me an email like a month ago and I have not checked my email since the beginning of December so um, I just replied to it yesterday if you've written me an email anytime like recently in, in the in the recent memorable history I just have not I don't what's going on with my lip here I just um don't check that email very often and I'm I'm busy with other things so I haven't really been interacting with anyone so I apologize if you've written me an email um and I haven't gotten back to you that's why but so this morning I finally got around to writing him back he's the one who um out of the kindness of his heart I guess, or for his own purposes, um, put my entire uh, Science of Getting Rich audio and commentary series into one mega file so you can just listen to the whole thing straight through or pause it and return to it without having to go through all of the different videos. Um, he's the one that did that and sent it to me so that I could upload it to this channel. Um, so I'll link to his channel below, but um, I wrote him back and I was telling him that lately I have really been, um, I feel like I am the closest that I've been in the last four years 
to completely exiting this entire space. Um, uh, and I don't, I think I wrote him a pretty short email. I don't remember what I said. Um, and he wrote me back this great email today um, with some really great insight in it. And it's come at a weird time. So let me just backtrack and explain why I'm at this point where I was like, I got to get rid of this channel or I got, basically, I just watched the Teal Swan documentary. And then almost immediately, I watched the Escaping Twin Flames Netflix documentary. And I want to say like a year and a half ago, whenever the anniversary was of the Heaven's Gate cult, uh, big like mass suicide, which was in 1997, I remember because I was about to graduate from high school, I was at my job. I wasn't about to, I was, I, it was the year I was going to graduate from high school, I was at my job at a bagel store at like 5.30 in the morning and it came on the TV and I just remember being completely blown away and freaked out by that happening. So it was definitely 1997, 25-year anniversary had to be when they did this documentary. So 2022, if you haven't watched that documentary and you have any, it sounds interesting in any way, watch it because it's crazy. There's so much footage from the actual cult. Um, it's just, it's just crazy. But at the time that I watched that a year and a half ago, that was another time where I was like, I really just don't know if I should be involved in anything on YouTube having to do with manifestation because while um, manifestation and the ideas surrounding it are very real, they're just like a part of being human. This isn't even a magic trick. This isn't a magic skill. It's basically an uncovering just a part of your humanity that is always there and that you've always been using. That's real. The stuff that has popped up on YouTube is largely complete bullshit, complete distortions um, by people that aren't even that creative, honestly, uh, to make a buck. That's it. Like th It's just people telling you what you want to hear to make a buck. And unfortunately, the same type of people who will tell you whatever you want to hear to make a buck are the same type of people that will very irresponsibly tell you things that will arm you to put yourself in serious harm's way. And I've always hated this. This has always really bothered me. And the thing about it that's really bothered me was one specific thing. And it was telling people that are in abusive relationships that they are the their thoughts are the direct cause of another person's behavior so a woman who's experiencing a relationship with an abusive man is being told that because she expects him to be abusive that's why he is and that when he shows up and abuses her verbally it's because she is thinking those thoughts or whatever and I can guarantee you that the vast majority of people in that situation are absolutely not thinking those things. And I remember because I've been in one of those relationships 20 years ago. Um, wow, talking through this is connecting some things. Um, being in a relationship like that myself 20 years ago, I can tell you for sure, and this is what upset me about it, that being told that at the time, at that impressionable age and you know when you're in an abusive relationship you're in a very beaten down vulnerable place in some way or another to be in that in the first place um I might have bought it I don't know if I would have bought it but um I can tell you that with that person I was in a relationship with I often went through periods of time where I thought all of the abuse was behind us um and I didn't expect him to do what he did and I was very surprised with things that he said and the timing of things happening and so when I heard this shit I was just like wow shame on every one of you that is saying this to people and it's just you know it's just like so irresponsible to do that and I always hated that about this community and at first I was like well I can be a voice of reason but after watching these cult documentaries um I don't remember it at the time with the, with the Heaven's Gate thing I was like oh it's too much of a stretch to relate this to like the Neville Goddard people 
it's just it's there I would you know watching it I was like man there's there's a parallel there's a parallel um but I was just like no it's while there are some 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 things that are similar it's really not the same and I don't know just kind of let that go but this teal swan stuff and the the twin flames thing which is ongoing one well, so is teal swan I just started to think a couple things one I am giving I use the phrase with Emperor James in the email yesterday I feel like I'm giving peripheral legitimacy to these things like the fact that my channel is here and it's just a person who is like just talking about their experience and their per, you know perspective on all these different concepts and everything and the fact that like I'm in the same area and like I was on reddit with some of these frauds um you know like the fact that I've ever in any way been associated with them and like the people on my channel according to my google analytics uh watch all of this garbage like the people that watch my channel are it's just like all the other uh videos that they watch that are listed are there's almost never somebody on there who I'm not just like oh my god I don't want to be associated with any of this it's making me feel like that crossover I'm legitimizing all those other people and something about like you know um my channel is like the fuel for people to take that leap into buying into this other garbage and either you know at best wasting their time and money and at worst really wasting some some precious opportunities and or um, doing very destructive things to their lives putting themselves in danger in a real way and so after watching um these last couple things like the second thing I was thinking was uh man you know and heaven's gate too which is heaven's gate's the wildest thing if you look at the people that end up in these cults if you spoke you would never think they were the types of people to be susceptible to influence like that and I think um it's not even like there's something wrong with the people who get sucked into these cults. It's to me, it almost seems like there's a, t you know, almost like wrong place, wrong time, wrong state of mind. Um, and if you have a combination of just the wrong things at the wrong time, you get sucked slowly right into one of these bad things. And I think a lot of people are experiencing that with the manifestation stuff. Um, they're either in a exceptionally impressionable, you know, not even necessarily a bad place. That's the thing that really bothered me about this. Um, it's not like, oh, people are down and out and then, you know, so they're susceptible to this and then they get sucked in. It's like, you can just sort of be in a wide open place or just, uh, not even depressed or negative necessarily, place but just kind of questioning things and then it snowballs into some years long um unproductive at best just kind of um experience with complete bullshit I don't know I just I have been feeling like I don't want to be anywhere near that honestly selfishly like, I just don't want to have anything to do with that. And I don't want to in any way um, contribute to anyone else going through something like that. Like, I realize it's not my fault and that, you know, um, as Emperor James was so astutely pointing out in his email, and this has been my approach to it too, you know, I'm speaking authentically and honestly. I'm not trying to get anything from anyone, um, especially not through the devious means that others here are and as long as I'm doing that then I can't really be you know I can't really worry about who hears what and how they take it and what they do with it and so that's legitimate but at the same time this is completely optional for me this whole thing so um I don't know the big part of the reason I wanted to make this video was to just talk about that culty stuff and 
and more weird, some weird stuff's happened in the last couple days. And even making this video, I'm, I don't know. I can't quite put together what this weird out picturing of stuff in my life has been, but um, I'm concerned for the people in this community, honestly, especially after watching these last two things. And especially since they watch all this other garbage on YouTube, in addition to my channel, which is like, um, in, you know, honestly, I think unless you're somebody who is super, super honest with yourself about things and you're someone who's super, super dedicated to the truth and personal growth and forward movement and all of that, I'm not really sure you can get a lot from this channel. And I'm afraid that what you get, if you're not in that place, those aren't your motives, is unfortunately something that just might lead you down a worse path. So anyway, I, I don't, you know, that's that's been really bothering me. And I'm really concerned for people getting sucked into cults in this, especially after watching the Twin Flames thing, because I know for sure that people that are into Neville Goddard are you know, with the SP thing, there's a big crossover with the whole twin flame thing and seeing what happened to these people with the twin flames universe thing, I just thought, fuck, I'm way too close to this. I'm way, like this psychopath that runs this thing. Um, I, God, how gross, how gross if, I don't even want the same eyeballs looking at me that's looking at that guy. But so interestingly, it's been a weird couple days. Yesterday, this is kind of non sequitur. I'm just going to move on to the weirdness of the last couple days. Yesterday, um, I went to the gym in the morning, like I do. And I was leaving. And I texted my ex with whom I work and asked him, if he, asked him if he wanted a smoothie from Panera. And usually if he wants a smoothie, then I go to Panera and I get myself a Diet Pepsi. Everybody's happy. He said no. I lied and said, well, I'm going anyway because I wanted him to have one. I like bringing him a smoothie. I wanted him to have one. I said, well, I'm going anyway. So if you're saying no because you don't want, you know, you don't want me to go out of my way, I'm going anyway. He said, no, I don't want one. So then I thought, okay, if I come back to the office now, it's going to look like I was lying. But oh well, I'm just going to go back anyway because I don't really want to drink. And I was like, screw it, I'll just go get one. Um, not necessarily to hide my minor lie, my manipulation to get him a healthy beverage for breakfast. But I ended up going to Panera when I probably shouldn't have been there. And when I go to Panera, it takes me less, it takes me like, I timed it, it takes me a minute and a half I order it on my phone. I order the drink on my phone. I walk in, the cups are right there. I get my cup, I get my drink, I leave. It's like in, out. In the time that I was in Panera, this big thing went down. Um, involving a guy who I kind of know, weirdly. Because I'm in there every day. There's, you know, I know, every, I know all the staff because I'm in there every day. And... So sometimes I'm, I stop and talk to people and then other people that are regulars at Panera chime in or, you know what I mean? It's kind of a friendly environment and everything. And that, that's generally like anywhere I go, it's kind of like that. After a while, I know everybody because I just do the same thing over and over every day. And so last week I was at TJ Maxx buying a suitcase or two weeks ago and somebody leaned over. I was in line waiting to pay for my suitcase and somebody leaned over and said, hey, Panera is that way. You're in the wrong place. And I looked up and it was this guy from Panera and he's like, you know, ha ha ha. And uh, he's like, how you doing? And I said, oh, I'm, I'm a little upset that, that I go to Panera so much that people that only know me from Panera are recognizing me out in the wild and ha ha ha, that was it. Um, I'd seen him there maybe twice, friendly guy, He, you know. Yesterday when I was in there, this man, I was walking out, I was like going back to my car and this older guy, like 70 at least, like rushed past me like angrily and went out the door and walked straight up to the car that was parked right next to mine. And he opened the driver's door and started, I couldn't hear him, but he started like gesturing and 
um, yelling at the person. So I, you know, just stood there. Um, and after, you know, a few seconds, I thought, okay, well, this must not be any, any big deal. So I leave and I go out to my car, which is right next to him. And he's just berating this woman who's sitting in the driver's seat, crying and other older, you know, these are like, they're like in their seventies. The man had to at least be in his seventies. I don't know how old, how old the woman was. She had gray hair, long hair, like mine, gray. She's just like wailing and the guy next to me in the car next to me on the other side rolled down his window and started yelling at the guy. And then this dude, the one that had come up to me in TJ Maxx like two weeks ago, I didn't even know he was there. He comes like bolting out and runs right up to this guy and starts yelling at him to leave her alone. This is a woman. She's crying. Stop yelling at her, whatever. And this guy was not having it. And they got into a big altercation. The guy that was yelling at his wife, I'm just putting this together right now. Holy shit. The guy that was yelling at his wife just reaches out and just starts strangling the, the nice guy that I saw on TJ Maxx just starts strangling him. So there's this big altercation. They both end up on the ground. The guy that was next to me called the cops. Um, the old guy's keys flew out of his pocket. You know, the abused wife got out of the car, you know, stumbling over, picking up the keys, yelling, stop, stop, stop. He yelled at her, you know, look what you did, you stupid cunt. This is so stereotypical. And then he went back into Panera. The cops came. Um, he was resisting being detained. It was just a big thing that I shouldn't have even seen. I mean, this all like in the minute and a half that I would normally be in Panera at this exact moment on this day, I'm there to witness this whole scene firsthand from five feet away. And I'm thinking, wow, like what are the odds that I was even gonna be, you know, I'm, I am generally at Panera at some time between like 9 a.m. and noon, but um, what are the odds that I'm there at this exact moment? And I witnessed this scene that was very familiar to me, by the way, because I, you know, I had this relationship in my 20s with somebody just like that. Same type of thing. Um, he would make some big scene or something and then blame it on me. This happened all the time. So I was like very familiar with that dynamic, but I didn't feel particularly affected exactly. Like it didn't it didn't bring anything rushing back. I don't feel like, oh, there's like something unresolved here that I needed to see this, but it was just too weird to ignore. I was just like, I know this isn't a coincidence, but I don't know why. I don't know why I saw this. What did I, you know, what am I supposed to get from this? I don't know. And I still don't really know. Other than that, it ties into what I just said about this community. Um, and the abuse, I think that's the worst thing in this whole community is um, it is definitely going to, I wonder what the collective years of life wasted for women who are in this desperate situation with an abuser and they don't know how to get out or they can't get out. I stayed in this relationship for four years and I was never dependent on him. Um, I could have left at any time. And because of my own, you know, broken idea of myself and my my life circumstances and my feelings about my appearance and just a lot of things, I voluntarily I stayed voluntarily. How many women are going to find this community? I I searched the internet high and low for things. This was like 2020 um this 2004 so 20 years ago um right about now so it's almost the exact 20 year anniversary of when I met that guy and that relationship started um I was looking all over the internet for any relief like somebody validate that this isn't me like that he is an abuser you know I would like google all kinds of stuff he did and try to put it together that I just wanted like something that said this is the care. These are all the characteristics of an abuser. Cause then I could go, okay, it's not me. I can leave. I don't need to stay here because I have a responsibility. I don't need to stay here because I'm causing this and I need to fix whatever about me is causing this. Um, what I need to do is just leave and fix myself. And that's what everybody, literally everyone in an abusive relationship needs to do.
But this community is telling people that that person, you know, the message isn't you've created this relationship in the form that it is because of how you feel about yourself. You've invited this person into your life and they're staying there and you're staying involved voluntarily probably um, because of how you feel about yourself. They're being told, no, this person's a good person and they're only acting the way that they act because of you, because you somehow think that they're going to act that way. You expected them to act that way. You're thinking that because they acted this way in the past, they're going to again. It's your fault. And therefore you, really it lies on you. Like you have the responsibility now to fix this and to turn this, you know, frog into a prince. That's what's happening here all over. And it's obnoxious. Like the core truth of that, which is that this relationship, you have a pattern of creating relationships with abusive people, that you are the creator of those, that part's true. And that's like, and then it goes off in this wild, insane, not so direction um, where for, you know, 99.99, um, you can have my course and then I'll tell you how to undo it. Uh, I don't know. So anyway, maybe that maybe that little scenario yesterday that I saw at Panera was just to prompt me to make this video. I don't know. I would love to know. It really it, it it's really nuts. But so I was saying to my ex yesterday, this is so weird. I just witnessed this domestic abuse thing. Oh my god, this is like that was like something out of my twenties. Like that scene was like one that I've been involved in. It was like a it was like an outpicturing of my mind right in front of me, liter in literal reality. But why? I wasn't even thinking about that. You know, it wasn't. So what's the meaning of this? Because I'm not one of the people who's like, oh, I thought about it. And so it showed up. Yeah, I wasn't thinking about it. I can tell you that for sure. It was the furthest thing from my mind. And then boom, right there it is right in front of me. It's a part of something else. Um, I certainly created that uh, experience for myself somehow. But I can't tell you how. And it wasn't some cheesy ass surface level thing like I was thinking about it. And then it showed up. It was something deeper than that. It's part, of, it's part of a deeper, there's a reason for it. I don't know what it is. But then today, so this was weird. And I don't know if this was because I was thinking about that stuff yesterday. Today, I, I was looking at my um, investment portfolio and I needed to log into my personal investment portfolio that's not connected with my ex. And that always texts a code to my old phone. I have a new phone number and whatever. I never changed it. So my old iPhone is still, you know, a thing. And so it texted me a code. So I picked up my old iPhone. I haven't picked it up in probably a month. And there was a whole bunch of missed calls on there to a number I haven't used in over five years. And it was all of these, it was like um, just a bunch of messages saying that uh, there was some sort of legal action going to be taken against me and blah, 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 blah. So I'm like, this has to be a scammer. Somebody called my stepfather like two months ago asking a bunch of questions. And I just said, yeah, it has to be a scam because I don't, there's nothing that could, you know, there's nothing that could be that, like, I don't have anything outstanding. I don't have any debt. I don't have any, you know, nothing. There's nothing this could be. It has to be a scam. So today there were all these messages and one of them kind of sounded legit. Um, they were all from the same number. I really didn't do a lot of research on this first, but so I had my brother call. My brother's an attorney. So I had him call one of these people back and he was like, yeah, okay. So I have some info. She, he's like, it sounded really legit. I don't know. They didn't give me any information that they couldn't have gotten online. So it could still be a scam, but they said that you have a, you know, um, a personal credit line open from 2017 that was never paid on and it's in default. And I'm like, well, no, that never happened. I never did that. I have to discover, you know, I've got a bunch of discover stuff and never that. And obviously none of my stuff is in default. And, um, you know, he's like, well, they, ha they supposedly had an application where you listed mom and me as a, as a reference. And I'm like, Okay, that sounds like who would list their mother and their brother as references? 
on a loan application. This is sounding more and more like bullshit. Um, and eventually I just did a whole bunch of Googling about every single thing I could find. And I'm, I mean, I don't know how this, it's not on my credit report. So pretty sure this whole thing is a scam, but this also today, and by the way, these messages were from like a month ago. I just discovered them today. Discover them today. Um, this also like dredged up some stuff from that time in my life when I was in that abusive relationship. That abusive relationship uh, was also the time period where I went bankrupt, where I was totally broke, par probably part of the reason why I stayed in it. Um, it just sort of dredged up yesterday that thing kind of dredged up a little bit about that relationship and today this thing kind of dredged up a little bit about the financial atmosphere of that time and I'm finding this really interesting um something has to be happening where uh there's something that like me you know I you know thinking about the domestic thing that I saw um it didn't it didn't I didn't have any feelings about it. And I didn't really feel super upset about it. And my Fitbit did not tell me that I was stressed out last night. So it's like I didn't really have a stressful reaction to it. It just seemed significant in a way. But I guess I would have to say, like if I was looking at that period of my life, am I over it? Have I let all of that go? It seems like the answer is yes. Um, you know, going through everything I was thinking when that was going down and after I left. I was thinking about that woman. I didn't feel any kind of urge to, somebody else was kind of like taking some other passerby, had stopped and was like comforting her and everything. And um, I thought, you know, there's really nothing anybody can say or do for her because she's, she's gonna have to find her way out of this situation. Um, it was like an older Eastern European immigrant guy, which, Incidentally, I also know some of those people and I just thought, you know, these people are probably in, in a lifelong pattern that's very difficult to break. Um, you know, I don't know if she was also an immigrant, but I just thought, you know, I kind of just need to get away from this scene because there's not anything that can be done for her. Like I know there's nothing I could say, plus she's like 30 years older than me. Um, and I just thought it's really rough that she's in that situation that really sucks. But I know from my own personal experience that you can't really get out of that until you can. Um, eventually, something just kind of snapped into place for me. I started to feel better about myself and my situation. I started to feel more hopeful about creating what I wanted for myself. I, you know, I didn't feel so stuck in a bad situation. And I started realizing I'm not going to marry this guy. I'm 28. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm not going to marry this guy. I'm not going to stand at the altar and uh, promise my life away to somebody who strangled me. By the way, I mentioned that. I, I forgot to mention that. The guy strangled. I, I know I mentioned that. The guy strangled the nice guy from Panera, this old guy. And I, I didn't, until I was just talking about this, I didn't put it two and two together that I had also experienced that. I got strangled. It was one of the most terrifying things I've ever experienced. And apparently, if you have an abusive partner who strangles you, your odds of being one of the domestic deaths, homicides, whatever, domestic violence homicides is way, way, like hundreds of times higher if you're with somebody who goes for the neck. So that was interesting. It's interesting that that was also a part of this. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so yeah, I'm not sure what to make of all that. I didn't feel much when I saw the scene go down. I don't feel like I have like any deep trauma related to it. There's just this one thing that is my concern for other people who I think are being set back by this community in those situations. That upsets me. Um, I've talked about that here before, years ago. In like the first few months that I made this, this channel, I was talking about that. And I was 
analyzing myself and saying, you know, my reaction to this, it's like, I wouldn't have this reaction if I felt like everybody was going to be okay, you know? So for me, I guess, um, the idea that uh, things can still really go wrong here, or people can be in the wrong situation. Um, I don't know. I guess that's something worth exploring. Because like I just said, you can't really get out of it until you can get out of it. Why? I don't know. Like, it just seems like there's so little free will. It almost seems like luck. Um, you know, the things that brought me to the point where I was able to exit that relationship... I don't know, it just seemed like a process that had to be gone through. So I guess maybe people getting sucked into this horrible, horrible advice, this um, this idea that they are responsible for things that they aren't responsible for, instead of being you know, advised about what they are responsible for and how to fix that part, um, I guess if people get sucked into that and they get set back a couple years or longer, that uh, that's okay. I guess it's not something that I should really feel upset about. That's really the only thing that came from seeing that. And then the thing today um, is interesting because that was a little more, that I felt a little more. Um, I think maybe I still have some qualms about the fact that I filed for bankruptcy because I, I filed for bankruptcy for a lot of money, uh, a lot of money, just all discharged completely. And I never did anything intentionally trying to like scam credit card companies. I just always had this, you know, idea, which proved to be true that I was going to be financially uh, well off that I, you know, I sort of had this like entrepreneur inside of me that hadn't fully developed yet. I knew I was going to have a lot of money eventually. So I took a lot of liberties with spending money on credit cards and um, living off credit cards. Sometimes I had a lot of credit and I was able to live off it for a long time. And uh, yeah, I don't know. There must still be something in there about that. It was almost like when I was um, I was running through my mind, like, what could this be about if this is real? Like, is there a debt that I didn't pay? Is there something that I did wrong? Is there, you know, what could this be? And I sort of had that feeling of being back there again in my 20s, in the same time I was in that relationship, um, just sort of feeling like I'm doing something wrong or I did something wrong or I need to be, you know, punished or something like that. So that I at least get in a way. I've also been having weird issues with my business. I've been doing things that I expect to have a result and they don't nearly have the result I'm expecting. This is like the opposite of last year. Last year was crazy. It was like this crazy money flow. This year isn't really, it's not so much a money problem as it is um, I, like, thing I'm I'm doing things and they're not they're not producing the result I'm expecting um and other weird stuff's happening so there's like this kind of weird thing going on right now with me and myself and um something having to do with that like I basically didn't work since July I basically didn't work until like a month ago. And I think part of me still feels like if you're not working hard, you don't deserve money. Um, that might be something that's in there or I don't know. That I could see as having a little bit more to explore. I'm pretty good when it comes to money. So money stuff coming up is definitely weird and it's not really about money. It's more about me. But I mean, it always is. Speaking of which, um, my friend Tim Grimes' book, Money, Your Friend, just was released recently. And I haven't read the whole thing yet, but I've read parts of it. I think he, I'm not sure if he's giving it away or what. It's not expensive right now because it's new. I don't think it's, I don't think he's ever like selling expensive books, but basically you can afford this book and Tim's a great guy. So I would go see about how to get that book. I think he's doing a, or did a workshop on it. 
that is available. I'm really sorry. I have not been into this, anything having to do with this stuff um, for a while. I also got sick last week, as you may have noticed in the last two videos. So I've been kind of recovering from that, plus Christmas. Um, but yeah, so otherwise I would be more informed about what's going on with Tim. But um, his channel is linked below. Go and get his book that just came out about money and about all of the psychology and stuff around that and manifesting. So anyway, um, I'm just going to end this. This is just, you know, uh, if you come to this channel looking for some big message, I uh, don't think you're always going to be satisfied. Um, also, thanks to Emperor James, you know, he was saying, um, that I've said often on here that this channel is just for me to work out my own thoughts and it's for me and it's weird I don't know why I need an audience if that's the case but this was definitely one of those videos where um, people who are looking for the garbage on other people's channels are gonna be like what did I just watch it's really only people who are I think um, in a specific place that can listen to this whole thought process and draw the parallels to something that they have going on right now because um, there's probably a reason that you're hearing this. Um, I don't really believe in accidents anymore, uh, especially now. I mean, things will just show up to, they're always around and you know, if you, if you don't realize that they're there, you'll miss them just like the water this morning for me. Um, it's, you know, how easy would it be to just have not read any meaning into the thing yesterday morning or to have read any meaning into my feelings about what happened today with this scammy thing? You, you could miss all of this. And these are all, it's like life is constantly presenting you with opportunities to use some physical manifestation to shift something in yourself. It's happening all day, every day, literally everywhere, literally everywhere. It's, it's basically what this whole thing is. And if you're missing it, oh, well, but you're watching this channel and other things like it. So hopefully um, that means that you're at least interested in starting the process of becoming aware of all of this stuff. It's always there. It's always been there. And, uh, pretty sure it's the whole purpose of being here is to learn how to use it so anyway uh that's it did i forget something don't get sucked into a cult okay and uh don't blame yourself for your abusive partner's behavior just blame yourself for getting into a relationship when you weren't in a place to not attract an abusive partner and uh that is your responsibility is your responsibility to um remove the blocks that you have uh, to seeing your own value and worth and having boundaries that keep nasty people away from you. People that will show up as being nasty in your reality away from you. Um, have a great day.